Hello guys, um, I am Gimmick Quattro, and welcome back to my channel, and it's been a while, it really has been, um, things have just been crazy, I was supposed to be doing Duel Links recordings, there was just problems going on with my computer and trying to do that in audio, and... It was a big hassle, and I kept slowly getting head and head and head of each recording that, because I kept trying to redo the same recording, and because of me trying to do that, it just kept getting pushed ahead a little bit in gameplay that just didn't make sense with the recording. So I got just very frustrated and gave up on it. But after talking with someone, I um. I, uh, I decided to finally kind of get back into uh, doing some more online stuff, um, get deck profiles and stuff out a little bit, or at least my own, you know, they're not great deck profiles by any means, and I don't want anybody to take these as if they are. Um, come to expect that I am not a, an excellent player, I am very noob, moderate level. I understand the game, I understand the core functionality of the game, that doesn't make me perfect at it. And that doesn't mean I know all the combos, all every single card, and which is going to work best with which. I'm still very much a noob like a lot of other people. So with all that being said, I'm going to do a deck profile on my own ancient on my Ancient Warrior build, and then, um, so this will be posted on Tuesday, I'm recording this on Monday, and then Thursday, I'm actually going to be doing about six matches, um, six to ten matches with a deck, depending on how long it takes, and, yeah, so if you guys want to start requesting a deck that you guys want to see me do, because right now I don't have the money to do card pack openings like I would want to. But yeah, if you guys have any deck ideas and whatever else that you want me to try to build. Or if you want to see some of the pre-built decks that I do have. Then uh, let me know uh, down in the comments and I will get straight to them next week and keep going. If I don't have a deck request, you know, by the time next week comes around, I will either try and think of my own deck. I'll probably just spend that time showcasing one of my own decks that I already have pre-built and stuff like that that I'm pretty okay with. With uh, with all that being said, let's get into the first card. One, two, three. So, Ancient Warrior Chief Chow Day. I am going to butcher these names um it's actually ambitious warrior this says chief this says ambitious so i'm gonna butcher these names but that's okay um i run two copies of him his effect is while you control another ancient warrior monster your opponent cannot target this card with card effects also it cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects you can only use each of the following effects of this ancient warrior once per turn if a card your opponent controls is destroyed by battle by card effect, you can send one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard, special summon this card from your hand. Which I think is one of the main reasons why I play this. Because it's, I get into battle, one of my ancient warriors destroys one of my opponent's monsters, and I get to automatically summon another 300 body, or a 3000 body to the field, that can just just keep swinging in, might be able to do a direct attack, anything. Now the next effect is, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon that monster to your field and defense position. Again, a great effect, definitely with decks that prefer to have the monster that it destroyed in the graveyard, me being able to take it away from them, make sure that they lose, it, that they lose a resource, which can be really nice. The only reason why I play two is it can be kind of dead in hand um, if you don't have setup or the way to destroy opponent's monster. So 
yeah. It's just, when I've played the game, when I've played with this deck, the best ratio that I could find was two seemed to work out the best for Mary for me. Um, next card here. Whoop. We have Senke Champion Zhang Dei. He, um, he says, gain 300 attack for each monster your opponent controls. During your turn only, you can only use each effect of the, you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. So, right off the bat, the kind of, the nice thing to state here is the, the plus 300. Yes, it's only 300, but he's already 27. My opponent has one monster. I'm at 3,000. Yes, it's only during my turn, but still, my typically now how games go, my opponent will have at least two or three monsters. So that's an extra six to nine hundred points of um, damage that I can do. So and the first effect states: if you control two or more ancient warrior monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Ancient Warriors are pretty good at swarming, or good enough. They take um, support from uh, from the Fire Fist formations to kind of help out with that. And when doing so, they can they can swarm. Getting him out really isn't that hard by any means. Um, then a second effect states: if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can activate this effect. This card can make up to two attacks on a monster during each battle phase this turn. Also, a perfectly reasonable ability. He's easy to get out. Attack boost already. My opponent just happens to have more monsters than I do. I can take out two of them. I think that's really good. And I'm, and I'm okay with that. Um, I do run three of him. Because you do want to see him relatively often, since he is easy to play and get out. Um, I think it's totally fine to run three copies. If you wanted to run two, you could also do that, but I wouldn't go any lower than two. Next is uh, Gang Young. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Your opponent cannot target... Other ancient w warrior monsters you control with card effects. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can target one monster your opponent controls, destroy it. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, my opponent goes first. I have one copy of this in my hand. My opponent plays a monster on his first turn. I get to play this on my first turn. And if my opponent has managed to summon, say, two or three monsters... I get to summon this and destroy one of them before even the battle phase with a 2500 point body. Again, really good. He can sometimes be dead in hand if I already have a field presence. So that means I either have to then normal summon him or just use him to activate the effect of another card. Which really isn't that bad of a... That's not really like that much of a minor setback, you know, because there are something, there are cards in the deck that do need um, to like discard a card from my hand or something like that to activate their effects, so. Yeah, he's a level 7, I believe. He is a level 7, so once we get down to the spell cards, um... With him being dead in hand, it's easy. I can activate uh, Sacred Throat of the Seven with him. So, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Next card is Fearsome Zhang Young. All our ancient warrior monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. You can only use each of the following effects of Ancient Warrior Fearsome once per turn. At the start of the damage step. When your Ancient Warrior monster battles an opponent's face-up monster, you can special this card from your hand. If you do, that opponent's monster loses a thousand attack. 
I love this ability, or this effect. It comes into play so often, I feel like. I used to actually run him at two. Um, I just had one on the side deck. And yes, I know my side deck is not full. That's We'll get to that in a little bit. And then I eventually switched him over to three because I just found that I really wanted to see him more often than not with such a really easy summoning condition plus the ability to make the opponent's monster lose a thousand attack, um, which can really help with some of the smaller guys being able to get over um, get over one of my opponent's monsters. It's I love him. I think he's really, really good for the deck and a great ability. His second effect is, if a card your opponent controls is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. This also works great, because you're almost guaranteed, on activation of its first effect, you're pretty much guaranteed to destroy like an opponent's monster, which that means you can just destroy another card your opponent controls. It's There's definitely, like, some, like, small combos that you can do with this deck just, like, during the battle phase alone that can that are just so... that can be so deadly to the opponent, and it's crazy. I'll try to... It'll be a bit clunky when I try to talk about it, but I will get to it at the end of the deck profile. Some of the ones that I can think of. Um, next, we have... I cannot read your name because you are doop, because of my setup. Masterful Sun Mao. Good old good old masterful here if I could oh oh man. Sorry guys, I'm really bad. I'm bah. Well you control another ancient warrior monster. Your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks. You can only use each of the following effects of Masterful once per turn. You can send one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Add one Ancient Warrior monster from your deck to your hand, except Ancient Warrior Masterful Sun. So, this card... So, A, he's a 4-star. That means he's probably one of your first turn plays. Or it tends to be one of my first turn plays because I see him a lot, surprisingly. So, again, cards like the Fire Fist Formation um, cards, they just kind of have like a, like a, one of them has like a one-time usage. And that would be right here. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but it's okay for this example. So Fire Fist Formation 10 key just says, hey, grab a level 4 lower beast warrior type monster from your deck to your hand. So I run three different ones in the deck that I can grab, but this thing just then sits on the field. Yes, it gains all beast warriors gain 100 attack, but I don't really need the 100 attack point boost. So that means I can play that card, get a monster from my deck, play Masterful, get rid of Ten Key, to then get another Ancient Warrior from my deck to my hand. At that point in time, I basically just did two searches in one turn and have an 18 point body, uh, 1800 attack point body on the field. Um, and probably another way to get something else out. Like I said, this deck is can definitely like swarm a bit, so there's other cards that can really help out with that, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, his second effect is, if other Ancient Warrior monsters' effect is activated, except during the damage step, you can target one monster your, your opponent controls return to the hand. Alright, so... Yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just... Yeah, that's good. If I can just... It's just effect, though. And there definitely are effects that go off 
during the main phase that are pretty easy to take, pretty easy to use. Yes, it says it targets and has to be a monster, but it's still that's still not a bad effect. Now, if it was like any card, just <coughs> target any card, put it back to the opponent's hand. I think that might be a little bit broken, just a little bit. Sorry, my voice is just, like, shaky. <coughs> Ugh. There we go. That should be so much better. Hopefully. Here's hoping. No, I, um... If it was any card, then say if the opponent, like, just set, like, three back row, and you could bounce, like, one of them, or if you even manage to, yeah, you could just, like, bounce one of them. I don't know. So, some people might find a balance. Some people might not. It, it really just depends on how well you can break this card. But personally, I think I'm okay with just it targeting a monster. Next card. We have Graceful. Another level 4. You can target one continuous spell and trap card. Spell or trap card you control. Send it to the graveyard. And if you do, add one ancient warrior spell and trap card. Spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. If your other ancient warrior monster's effect is activated, except during the damage step, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls. Negate its effects until the end of the turn. You can only use each effect once per turn. So Again, like I would basically state is about the Spell and Trap card interaction with Masterful, takes the same effect in a way with Graceful, just instead of popping 10 key after using its effect for another monster, you're popping it to get an Ancient Warrior Spell and Trap, which can be... I play about 5 you know, three copies of one and then just two loose ones, but it is nice just to get them into your hand to use later. So I think it's a great effect, and I, I run the guard at three. Part of it is because he's a four-star, so, like, the extra ability to have a summon on monster is nice. A, just like a normal summonable monster is nice, but, yeah. All right. Then we have um, Victorious. The, the, the I don't know. We got Lou. We got the other. We got the other four. We got the other four star. What can we can we get a proper name for you? Probably not. Nope. That's not at all what I wanted. Um. Yeah, no, we're going to call you the Wind One. Alright, so, Little Wind. Little Wind here. While you control another Ancient Warrior monster, your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks. You can only use each of the following effects once of this card once per turn. Um, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Special summon one Ancient Warrior monster from your deck, except for this card. When an attack is declared involving another Ancient Warrior monster, you control. You can draw one card. He just works. So, there's another combo I, you know, I'm thinking about here. But, so, if the opponent has more monsters... You can just ditch a card, any dead card that you have on your hand, in your hand or, in, or on the field. Say if you have a card in the field that you want in the graveyard anyways to get its effect off, or you have a card in your hand that you want to send to the grave to get its effect off, or it's just a dead card in your hand, you might as well just, it just activate the effect. You can automatically replace that by having another Ancient Warrior monster on the field. And you can summon any one of them, it's not limited except for him. You can go and summon another four if you don't already have one. Do an Xyz play with it. 
summon any one of the big boys to get like uh you can get him out you can get valiant out to uh to do the boost and get some damage on board you can get any of them really out and they all will have some type of usefulness when it comes down to the damage or to the battle phase so i definitely play him a three and again there's definitely like a small combo i found that you can do with it and stuff like that then the lady who needs no introduction i play two ash blossom and joyous spring i play three lightning vortex or lightning storm i play one pot of desires because i don't really like pot of desires but it's also because I played two Sacred Sword of the Seven. Then, like I said earlier, it just says, Hi, dump a card. Uh, dump a... Uh, banish one level seven monster from your hand or face up on the field. Or face up your side of the field. Draw two cards. You can only activate one per turn. The banishing kind of sucks, but it's that's fine. I played double or nothing in the main deck. Um... Because I also, because I do play Utopia, and Utopia the Lightning in the extra deck. I've debated on whether or not I should just take that card out and replace it with another Ancient Warrior Spell and Trap card, and just have that be like a side deck card, but I hardly, also hardly ever see it. And in some situations, it just becomes a dump card. So, and eh, take it or leave it how you feel. Um... Here we have um, Tenzu. During your main phase, you can normal summon one Beast Warrior monster in addition to your normal summon. All Beast Warriors get 100 attack. I mean, this one's pretty much just self-explanatory why you'd want to play as many copies of it as possible and get them out. Because they stack. So if you have all three out, you can have four normal summons per turn, which you can do a lot if you have four normal summons. Then I play three copies of uh, Saga, uh, Ancient Warrior Saga, three visits. During your main phase, if you normal special summon an Ancient Warrior monster, you can target one of those monsters, add one Ancient Warrior monster with a different name from your deck to your hand. So the first part, you know, the best play, um, or one of the plays that I do very often is play that, and I'll either typically have either a Tenzu or a 10K in my hand. Um, either one realistically works, but it's like I play this, and say that I can play um, play Tenzu. That's then I do my normal summon. So now I've normal summoned and got another Ancient Warrior from my deck to my hand. And say if I played Graceful or Masterful, then I could pop this and then I can pop... Oh, wait. Let me think about this for a second. I just had this in my head. Now I'm getting distracted. I'll come back to it in a second. But either way, its second effect is... Um, if this card is sent from the, your, from the Spell or Trap card zone to the graveyard, you can special summon one ancient, warrior, one ancient warrior monster from your hand. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Um, send this card to the graveyard during the second standby phase after activation. I don't really like that effect. That effect on, like, all of them. All the spell and trap cards that they have. I think it's a weird effect, but it's whatever. So I guess it's because they're not too broken, I guess. But you're probably going to get rid of it before that anyways, so. Because, again, you can play this, summon Masterful, get a high leveled one from the deck to your hand um use masterful's effect to pop visit to then special summon whatever you pull out of your hand 
there you go. Then 10k, add a level 4 to your hand. Add a level 4 or lower Beast Warrior to your hand. There, from your deck. Self-explanatory, obviously that's why you're going to play it. Um, Sun Alliance. If you control Ancient Warrior monsters with two or more different attributes, you can declare one attribute your monster, your points cannot activate the effects of monsters they currently control with that attribute until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. If your opponent special summons a monster or you activate an Ancient Warrior monster effect, you can make, except for the, during the damage calculation, you can make all Ancient Warrior monsters you control gain 300 attack for each Ancient Warrior monster you control until the end of the turn. Um, even if this card leaves the field, you can only use each effect once per turn. So, to getting two or more Ancient Warriors out with different attributes is easy. So, the effect to just change, or the effect to just state, okay, this attribute of monster my opponent controls cannot do what they want to do for their entire next turn can be really, really helpful if you can get the card out pretty early on to kind of shut down the opponent. Definitely like against like a blue eyes deck, they wouldn't be able to do anything for an entire turn, which then just kind of gives you time to build up and just go in for the kill. Because this deck can like, it can be like a two turn, like, like, like a two turn win if you play, if things go well. Then, so I play, play one of this in the main deck um, I actually don't even have any in the side deck, but I definitely should. Then I play one copy of uh, of their tra trap card here. Defense of Chank Bang. If an Ancient Warrior monster battles an opponent... Battles, uh, if an Ancient Warrior monster battles, your opponent cannot activate any spell slash trap cards until the end of the damage step. That alone is a great effect. You can only use each of the following effects of defense once per turn. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, you can send this card, you can send this face-up card from your spell and trap card zone to the graveyard. Monsters your opponent controls cannot target ancient warrior monsters for attacks this turn. So that could pretty much just be like, all right, get rid of this, and now my opponent can't do, my opponent can't attack me. I'm completely safe. So I can, it's like, uh, it's almost like a Wabaku, um, or like a negate attack with just an extra effects added onto it. Then the, but it has to be face up. So like that's, but whatever. And then when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one ancient warrior monster from your deck. Again, it just helps out with the swarming. It gives... Um, helps out with swarming. It gives you a, the... Another chance to kind of stay alive. If that's like your last monster, you can summon out like a bigger boy to kind of protect you. There's de definitely like a lot that is very good about the card. And that... Um, but I only play one copy because trap cards are not always the best. So it can sometimes just be kind of dead or I don't want to see it. Because it's not really going to help me out as much. Definitely if I can't get rid of it or if my opponent can't guarantee to get rid of it. So For the extra deck. Um, one Utopia the Lightning. One Utopia. One Fire Fist uh, Tire King. Um, Tiger King, just because, well, for the Fire Formation Spells and Traps, the ability just to get one out of the deck, um, to kind of just thin the deck, because deck thinning is super important, and it's also a card advantage that can be played into like next turn or that turn, so. And once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, negate the effect of a face-up effect monster currently on the field, except Beast of Warriors. 
of all face effect monsters on field except for Beast Warriors until the end of your opponent's turn. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can you can send three fire formation spell trap cards you control to the graveyard, special summon two level four or lower Beast Warrior monsters with the same attack from the deck in defense position. That second effect never really goes off for me. I don't think I've ever really had it gone off because either A, I'm winning at that point, I'm mostly winning and I'm just throwing this card out there just because I can, or uh, it just never really has gone off for me, but I think it's definitely a good effect if you definitely have um, the spell and trap card, or the spell and trap cards that you need to get rid of to have the effect go off. But the ability just to detach and just shut down all monsters effects except for beast warriors is great it kind of goes in tandem with just the ability to shut down effects of a single attribute they just kind of work hand in hand in a way then i play um one dweller abyss dweller everybody should know what this does but while this card has materials attached to it and there was originally water all water monsters can find an attack you can detach one material your opponent cannot activate cards effect from their graveyard this turn. It's meta. It's, des it's definitely necessary in situations. So then I play a uh, one double, Utopia double. Is that what you are? Yeah, Utopia double. Then I play one Boral Sword, one Boral Load. No, I meant two Boral Load. One Appaloosa, one Nightmare Unicorn, Phoenix and Cerberus, um, IP Masquerade, and then their own uh, Link Monster Double Dragon Lords. I think they just came out with another one, and I just haven't looked into playing it yet, but whoops. Um, and this card says, this card is two Beast Warrior Monsters, including a Wind Ancient Warrior Monster, all Ancient Warrior Monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. You can only use each of the following effects um, of Double Dragon once per turn. If, card is card, if this card is Link Summoned, you can add one Ancient Warrior card from your deck to your hand. Quick effect, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Target one face up monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So, you play it, he becomes a 1600 body, I don't know... He becomes 600, 1,600 body because of the uh, plus 500. Then everybody else becomes gets that. And then you get to just grab an Ancient Warrior. So anyone that could be helpful at that point in time, just kind of grab it. And then you can uh, cycle. Just send a card. And then spin a card your, your opponent controls back to the hand. So it's not any problem to you. And sometimes the effect of having a card in the graveyard might be able to help you out. So I never really summon it just because the bodies can be so bulky and I can like get in really quickly early on, but it's definitely one that's useful if you need to keep extending plays by being able to grab things out of the deck. Then in the side deck, which is very much incomplete, I play another copy of Ash Blossom, another copy of Desires, another copy of Seven Swords, um, then I play one, I have one copy of Borrowing of Arrows. You can target one face up monster your opponent controls and one ancient warrior monster. Um, you control until the end of the phase. Half that opponent's monster's attack, and if you do, add that loss attack to your monster. Even if this card leaves field. If this card is sent to the graveyard, well, you can... Troll an Ancient Warrior Monster with two or more different attributes. You can place one Ancient Warrior with continuous spell and trap card from your, from your hand or deck face up on the field, except for this card. You can only use one effect per turn. Or you can only use each effect per turn. So, I should play it. Um, I actually think I might like this card over um, the attribute one. Because having the opponent, it's, I feel like Ancient Warriors, you can almost play them in two different ways. 
you can play them as very aggressive or you can play them as a bit more control based. If you want to be a bit more aggressive, then play arrows. If you want to have try to have a bit more control over what happens in the game, then play whatever this one is. Uh, um, Alliance. Again, but you could also see it as you could put Alliance in the side deck as a turn two card and play arrows in the main deck if you want to go first to be a bit more aggressive then once you kind of figure out what a deck your opponent's playing you can then switch out for um for alliance if you need to to shut down your opponent so that's up to you it's like a choice thing i've gone back and forth and had both of them in the deck but because i only play one copy I don't always see it. Um, I could also see just not playing double or nothing in the main deck and then just throwing in the one copy. And so then now you've got both. But I would also definitely consider, and I should do this, I haven't fully looked at the side deck yet. I'm like, one, just to work on the main deck and extra deck first and then try to figure out the side deck. So... And I've been working on this deck for a few, fair few months now. I just haven't had a lot of time, really. So that's why it's a bit incomplete, but I still want to get this deck profile out. And you guys can kind of comment down below what I should put in the side deck and what you think might be useful. So, yeah. And then I play two copies of East by South Winds. You must send this card from your graveyard. You must send this card to the graveyard during the second standby phase after activation. Once per turn, during your main phase, toss a coin. If the result is head, send this card to the graveyard. If this card is sent to the grave is sent from the spell and trap card zone to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. This turn, your opponent cannot activate card or effects in response to the activation of your ancient warrior monster card and effects. Also until the end of the turn, ancient warrior monster effects you currently control gain this effect. When this card declares an attack, you can destroy one card your opponent controls. Again, it's a bit of a control slash aggressive card. You can see it in both ways. The ability to say, no, my effects cannot be negated. Um, <clears throat> and I can now destroy more cards that you have just by attacking. Yeah. It's it can be good. I think the fact that it's a toin cost result that so if you don't have something on hand that if the toin cost fails, it can almost be dead on the field and your opponent can just take care of it. And that's why I don't necessarily like it because I could play it, have the toin cost fail, not have a way to get rid of it, then my opponent just takes care of it during their next turn. And when that happens, oh, I can't use its effect anymore, so it just be kind of became like a waste. But if you can play this, have the toying cost fail, and then use like Masterful to get rid of it, then the effect can, can go off and you can kind of keep playing. And it can be like a really nice like turn to, like if you're going second to kind of have that go off and be a bit more like have a turn to aggressive play or going second aggressive play, but again, that's that's like a judgment call on your part about how you want to see it. Um, this is just how I do it, but yeah, so that's my deck profile. I know, like I said, it's not the best, but I've been playing the deck, like I said, for a fair few months now. And I've definitely won a lot with it. Um, just because I happen to just understand this build that I've created, I might not be the best deck maker in the world and have the most competitive deck ever. But I do understand this deck. That means I do understand how most of it works in interactions. And that's, I haven't, I just picked up the deck again today after like three weeks. 
so I might not remember all the combos off the top of my head, but I, but yeah. So, I'm running at 40 minutes right now, but I'm going to try to talk about combos for a second, or at least get like one or two out of the way that are pretty basic. Um, or, you know what, no, I'm going to create a second... Yeah, I'm going to create a second video in which I will go over, because hmm, I want time to think about them without, like, messing them up, but, no, I'll shove it together in this. Um, I just had a really good one in my mind. Like I said, most commonly, a good starting hand would consist of, like, one copy of Masterful, one copy of... What are you? Try, uh, yeah, Visit. So one Masterful, one Visit, one k and one Tenzu. And then, I guess it really doesn't matter what the other card is. Um, Pot of Desires isn't bad definitely for more draw power to run into a couple of things or any of them really aren't terrible definitely ones that they're like oh you control two or more monsters i think that would be a good one if you play the one that says if you control two or more monsters by some of this card yeah it's him right here right here valiant so what you could do is play visit then play it really doesn't matter what order these three go in, just but play each copy of these three. Play Visit, play Tenzu, play Tenkei. Alright? Get the trigger off of Tenkei. Get the other level, get another level four. So you already have this one in hand, so you can kind of uh, pick and choose which one of these two you want, or you can get this guy for more plays. It's up to you. What, um, what you could do is you could grab him, okay? Grab a second copy of him. Play the first copy. Then you get rid of 10k, which then allows you to grab another ancient warrior monster. That's when you would grab... Um, where's the thousand? This is a thousand boy, right? That's when you grab the guy that says, um, yeah, you can smash someone's card this hard during the battle phase. Then you would grab him. Everybody following along? Because I don't know if, if, I'm sure if I am. Then, once you grab him, you can play your second graceful running off of the effect of Tenzu. Then you could pop Tenzu to grab another, I don't know. Then you can grab him. You can grab uh, um, Ambitious. Then during, so now you have two Graceful out in the field. And you have this in hand, plus this in hand, plus this in hand. Then you would special summon Zhang, Zhang Dei. During the battle phase, you would then be able to special summon. Then during the battle phase, you attack with one of the smaller guys, probably. Special summon this from your hand. Knock down your... Well, this is if you're going second. This play would really work the best if you're going second. Then you can special summon this. Opponent's card gets destroyed. Then you get to special summon this. And now on the board, you have a 3,000 attack point monster. At least a 27. A 23. And two 18s. But that's just kind of like one long, drawn-out combo that you can do. That can just shove a lot on the board 
at one time judge to get in for heavy amounts of damage. Yet again, it is kind of a tight combo, but you can make it work. Like, there's other ways that you can kind of make sure that that works. But anyways, I will try to go over more combos, and they'll be talked about during, um, during the battles that I play on Thursday. Now that we're at the end of the video, I want to kind of run through some things very quickly for those of you who want to hear. And if you don't want to hear, then... Uh, I've been Gimmick Quattro, and I'll see you all, and then I'll see you in the next one. But for those of you who want to stay, listen to this. I have set up an Amazon wish list for supplies that I would need to kind of keep evolving my channel to make it better. If you guys want to support me, then there will be a link in my Instagram. Um, which is gimmick quattro, gimmick underscore quattro. And in the link, um, in the bio, there will be a link tree link. And there you can get a link to my wish list. I have a few cards that I want to get. Um, and stuff like that. So, a few cards, um, like boost boxes that have recently come out that I, that I haven't been able to chance to open yet microphones, um, tripods, they're not all really that expensive, but if you guys want to help support me in that way, but you want to make sure that you want to get something that I make sure you're going to use for the channel, then that would be the way to do it. It would mean the world to me. If that did happen, I will be adding more stuff to the, um, to the list as time goes on. But anyways, and thank you for all of you who do stay to the very end of the videos and get to hear all this rambling on. Alright, after all that being said, thank you for watching. It means a lot. Um, if you guys are new, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on post notifications so you guys do not miss out on another video. Comment down below if you want to have a conversation, anything that I should have done with the deck, whatever else you say it, I'll read it. I'll try to respond. All right. I will see all of you in the next one. Peace.